Hello, and welcome to chapter five. All right, 5.1, moving along. Um, it's called How Populations Grow, and the goal for this chapter is to analyze how population size is determined by births, deaths, immigration, emigration, and limiting factors like biotic and antibiotic that, determining, that determine carrying capacity. Take a look at the far side. Troubles brewing. Yeah. Kind of, kind of sick, don't you think? If you get it. <laughs> All right, let's look at our objectives then. Um, but first, let's think about it. All right, in the mid, uh, I forgot, 1950s, a fish farmer in Florida tossed a few plants called hydrilla into a canal. Hydrilla was imported from Asia for use in home aquariums because it was hardy and very adaptable, obviously. The few plants that he tossed in rep reproduced quickly, and they kept on reproducing. And today, their tangled stems snag boats and rivers and overtake habitats. Native water plants and animals are disappearing because of them. So why do these plants get so out of control? And is there a way to get rid of them? Meanwhile, people in New England who fish for a living face a different kind of problem. Their catch has dropped dramatically. Despite hard work and new equipment, the cod catch in one recent year was 3,048 metric tons. But back in 1982, it was 57,200 metric tons, almost 19 times higher. That is a significant drop. So where did all the fish go? And can anything be done to increase their numbers? All right, our objective is first to list the characteristics used to describe a population, identify factors that affect population growth, describe exponential growth, and also describe logistic growth. First of all, oh, I collect too many things. Um, list the object, the characteristics used to describe a population. So the story of the hydrilla and cod both involve dramatic changes in the sizes of populations. A population is a group of organisms of a single species that lives in a given area, such as the hydrilla population represented on this map. As you can see, all the different colorations for the three years. Researchers study populations, geographic range, density and distribution, growth rate, and age structure. The area inhabited by a population is called its geographic range. A population's range can vary enormously in size depending on the species. For example, a bacterial population in a rotting pumpkin may have a range smaller than a cubic meter. Whereas the, pop oh, meter. Whereas the population of cod in the western Atlantic covers a range that cut stretches from the Greenland down to North Carolina. Humans have carried this hydrilla plant to so many places that its range now includes every continent except Antarctica and is found in many places in the United States. So population density refers to the numbers of individuals per area. Populations of different species often have very different densities, even in the same environment. For example, a population of ducks in a pond may have a low density, while fish and other animals in the same pond community may have much higher densities. Distribution refers, refers to how many individuals in a population are spaced out across the range of the population. It could be randomly, uniformly, or mostly concentrated in clumps. An example of a population that shows random distribution is the purple lupin. These wildflowers grow randomly in, field, in a field among wild, other wildflowers. The dots right here in this, this illustration represent individual members of a population with random distribution. An example of a population that shows a uniform distribution is the king penguin. The dots in the illustration represent individual members of a population with uniform distribution right here. King penguins are kind of uniformly spaced amongst each other. Finally, an example of a population that shows clumped distribution is obviously what it is. It's a striped catfish. The catfish, as you know, organized into tight groups. The dots in the illustration represent individual members of a population with a clumped distribution. Moving along. The population's growth rate determines whether the population size increases, decreases, or stays the same. 
Hydroya populations and their native habitats tend to stay more or less the same size over time. These populations have a growth rate of around zero. They ne neither increase nor decrease in size. The Hydroya population of Florida, by contrast, has a very, very high growth rate, which means that it increases in size. Population can also decrease in size, as you saw in the example before, cod populations have been doing. The cod population has a negative growth rate. To fully understand a plant or animal population, researchers need to know the population's age structure, the number of males and females of each population that each population contains. Because most plants and animals cannot reproduce until they reach a certain age, and also among animals, only those females can produce offspring. So age structure is also very important. All right, so when um, the characteristics used to describe a population, researchers study populations, geographic range, density, distribution, growth rate, and age structure. Objective two, identify factors that affect population growth. Okay, so a population will increase or decrease in size depending on how many individuals are added to it or removed, for, removed from it. The factors can affect population size or uh, birth rate, death rate, and the rate at which individuals enter or leave the population. Makes sense. A population can grow when its birth rate is higher than its death rate. If the birth rate equals the death rate, then the population may stay the same. But if the death rate is greater than the birth rate, then obviously the population is likely to shrink. Immigration and emigration. A population may grow if, more, if individuals move into its range from elsewhere, which is a process called emigration. And a population may also de decrease if in size of individuals move out of the population range, which is a process called emigration. So simply put, Identify the factors that affect population growth. It's fairly simple. The factors that can affect population size are the birth rate, death rate, the rate at which individuals enter or leave the population. Objective three, describe exponential growth. If you provided, <laughs> I love that picture, if you provide a population with all the food and space it needs, protect it from predators and disease, and remove its waste products, obviously because you get disease from waste products, the population will grow. The population will increase because members of the population will be able to produce offspring, and after a time, those offsprings will produce their own offsprings. They'll reproduce like rabbits, in other words. Under ideal conditions with unlimited resources, the population will grow exponentially. In exponential growth, the larger a population gets of course, the faster it grows, because they're all reproducing. The size of each generation of offspring will be larger than the generation before it. In a hypothetical experiment, a single bacterium divides to produce two cells every 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, under ideal conditions, the bacteria divides to produce two bacteria. The bacteria divides to, to, to produce two more bacteria. After another 20 minutes, those two bacteria divide to produce four more. And after these three 20-minute periods, we have two times two times two, or eight cells. Another way to describe the size of the bacteria population is to use an exponent, two to the power of three. In another six hours, there will be two to the power of six, or 64 bacteria. In one day, then, this bacteria population will grow to, oh my gosh, I gotta figure out what this number is. Hold on. Million, I, oh gosh, uh, I don't know. Four quadrillion, 720 quadrillion uh, individuals. Huge. If this growth continued without slowing down, this bacterial population would eventually cover the entire planet within a few days. That's crazy. All right, so if you plot the size of this population on a graph over time, you get what's called a J-shaped curve, 
that rises slowly at first and then rises faster and faster. If nothing were to stop this kind of growth, the population would become larger and larger and faster and faster until it approached an infinitely large size. Many organisms grow and reproduce much more slowly than bacteria, of course. Thank God. For example, a female elephant can produce a single offspring only every two to four years. Newborn elephants take about 10 years to mature. If exponential growth continued and all descendants of a single elephant pair survived and, re and reproduced, after 750 years, there would be nearly 20 million elephants. Sometimes when an organism is moved to a new environment, its population grows exponentially for a time. When a few European gypsy moths were accidentally released from a laboratory <clears throat> near Boston, these plant-eating pests spread across the northeastern United States within a few years. In peak years, they devoured the leaves of thousands of acres of forest. In some places, they formed a living blanket that covered the ground, sidewalks, and cars. Nasty stuff. So, describe of exponential growth. Under ideal conditions with unlimited resources, your population will grow exponentially, creating what we call a J-curve graph. All right, moving on to logistic growth then. Natural populations don't grow exponentially for long. Sooner or later, something stops the exponential growth. So what happens? Suppose that a few indiv individuals were introduced to, into a real-world environment. This graph traces the phases of growth that the population goes through. Phase 1, Phase 2, and Phase 3. We'll look at each one individually. All right, Phase 1, exponential growth. After a short time, the population be begins to grow exponentially. During this phase, resources are unlimited, so individuals grow and reproduce rapidly. Only a few individuals die, and many offspring are, are produced. So both the population size and the rate of growth increase more and more rapidly. Phase 2. Growth slows down. Carrying capacity. In real-world populations, of course, exponential growth does not continue for long. At some point, the rate of population growth begins to slow down. The population still grows, but the rate of the growth slows down. So the population size increases more slowly. Phase three, growth stops. And then further on at some point, the rate of population growth drops to zero and the size of the population kind of levels off. Under some conditions, the population will remain at or near this size indefinitely. So what is logistic growth curve? The logistic growth curve has an S shape that re represents what we call logistic growth. Logistic growth occurs when a population growth slows down and then stops, following a period of exponential growth. Many familiar plant and animal populations follow the logistic growth curve. So you have exponential rapid growth right here, and eventually, due to carrying capacity, you have, a, like, this is called the S-curve. It kind of just fluctuates up and down a little bit. So you, I'll go like this, up, and then this is logistic. This is exponential, and then you have logistics. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, hold on, I lost my spot now. Carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals a particular species that a particular environment can support. So once a population reaches the carrying capacity of its environment, the variety of factors stabilize it at, this, at that size. And that's where we come, come up with logistics growth. So objective four was to describe logistic growth. Logistic growth occurs when a population growth slows and then stops, following a period of exponential growth. growth population growth may slow for several reasons. Growth may slow if the population's birth rate decreases, or if the death rate increases, or if the birth falls and death rises together. In addition, population growth may slow if the rate of immigration decreases and the rate of emigration increases, or both. So ask yourself, can you 
List the characteristics used to describe a population. Can you identify factors that affect population growth? Can you describe exponential growth? And can you describe logistic growth? I hope so. Oh, do I have a cute picture? Let me see. There it is. There's your cute picture while I turn it off. Bye. <laughs>